Endemic poverty, violence and rampant corruption. The poorest country in the Western Hemisphere has been paralyzed for weeks. Is Haiti about to explode once again? And is the international community looking the other way? Hello and welcome to Bigger Than Five. I'm Rida Fakhri. Anti-government protests in Haiti continue as people call for President Jovenel Moïse to step down, blaming him for fuel shortages, corruption and rising inflation. Two million children are unable to attend school, businesses are shuttered and humanitarian aid has been suspended as protests enter their second month. A country of 11 million people, Haiti has long been plagued by gang violence, unemployment and budget deficits. While more than half the population lives on less than $3 a day, according to the World Bank, high-ranking government officials stand accused of embezzling $2 billion of oil funds intended for the country's development. This has become a rallying cry against systemic corruption in the country. The United Nations has been calling for a political dialogue, but members of the opposition, some of whom face accusations of corruption, refuse to negotiate. Meanwhile, the president, who was elected in 2017, insists that he will continue to serve out the remainder of his five-year term in office. Coming up in a few moments, we speak with the acting prime minister of Haiti, Jean-Michel Lapin. But first, we go to Port-au-Prince to meet some of the protesters and hear their demands. Nous, nos situations d'incertitude, de mobilisation intense dans le pays depuis environ une année. Eh bien, à cause de tensions qui viennent dans le pays, L'université a arrivé à l'ouvrir qui est déjà en hauteur. Il y a demandé pour le système de changer, il y a demandé pour la justice. Nous avons besoin de moraliser la vie politique. Moi, j'ai 48 ans, moi, j'ai deux petites. Il y a des gens qui plantent, il y a des gens qui font rien du tout. Et quand tous les jeunes garçons viennent à me connaître, moi, même les bras lâchés, je suis obligé de me pour prendre ça, je suis obligé de me faire. Pour si je ne suis pas je perdu la vie. Je ne pas perdu la vie, je ne suis pas vivre, je ne suis pas vivre. Depuis que je suis je toujours à le vendre. C'est comme ça, en pile de monde vivre, en pile maman à vivre, c'est dans la condition de pile maman à vivre. Jeunesse nous a gaspillé par les gens qui pensent avec eux. La manifestation pour que je ne Ce n'est pas ce qui est pas gagné. Il ne pas pensé avec nous. Si je ne pense pas avec nous, avec travail, grand goût, l'école de tout le monde. Je n'ai pas 50 ans sur le pouvoir. Je demande nos premiers moments de départ de Jovenel Moïse parce qu'il symbolise le système que la population a bataille contre lui. Et deuxièmement, nous avons bataille pour changer le système. Côté de la justice sociale, côté de la transparence dans la gestion de la chose publique, côté de la population est capable de faire une satisfaction avec les besoins de l'eau, tant que pour jouer de l'eau, pour jouer de l'électricité, pour jouer de l'école, pour jouer de l'université, pour jouer de l'infrastructure. Et la corruption et l'impunité, c'est un véritable obstacle pour nous arriver dans la société. So without a functional government, can the country emerge from this crisis? I'm now joined by Prime Minister Jean-Michel Lapin, who runs the country's day-to-day -day affairs. He joins us from Port-au-Prince. Prime Minister Lapin, Haiti is in deep crisis. There have been demonstrations for the past few months. The situation has indeed gotten worse over the past few weeks, with protesters insisting that they want the president to resign. He refuses to do so. How much longer, though, can he hold on to power? How much longer can he continue to resist these pressures, these popular demands? Thank you for giving me this opportunity. But first, let's recognize the necessity of understanding what is happening today in Haiti. Since 1987, Haitians have given themselves a new constitution, and the Republic of Haiti has experienced new political regimes. An agreement was achieved around democracy. Sovereignty belongs to the people who delegate through elections. Since then, we have not been able to build this country economically. All the presidents of Haiti, from 1990 to today, experienced the same turmoil caused by the very precarious socio-economic situation of the majority. At the government level, we are attached to the idea of preserving the state 
saving the institutions and protecting citizens' lives and property. Prime Minister, the, the people's demands are very clear. You talk about the need to protect democracy and the constitution. No one is contesting the election results, but since the president was elected in 2017, the situation has drastically changed. He is now facing serious allegations, accusations of corruption and embezzlement made by your government's own Supreme Court of Auditors. These are serious allegations, aren't they? Should he resign and face justice? No, no. that was just a little step back in history to make you understand the situation in Haiti. Here you are talking about a question of justice. Now the Court of Auditors report is at the justice level and we must wait for the justice's verdict. We are not there yet. Is the president guilty of anything? But these accusations are serious, are they not? What are you willing to do with these accusations? And again, the question, shouldn't the president resign to face justice and to clear his name? How can we talk about these accusations without a verdict from the justice system? Here you are talking rather about denunciation. On the basis of denunciation, we cannot ask the President of the Republic to hand over his responsibilities, which in my opinion are constitutional responsibilities. Meanwhile, Prime Minister, the protests continue, the country is virtually paralyzed. Is his resignation eventually in the best interest of Haiti? And if he does eventually step down, are you willing to, according to Article 149 of the Constitution, step in and take charge? We are not there yet, ma'am. Being ready or not is not the question. You must try to see the question from a social angle. And only the dialogues may guide the situation, in my opinion, towards the beautiful, the good, and the pleasant for the benefit of the majority. Therefore, let's hang on to this dialogue process. And Mr. President, His Excellency Jovenel Moïse is hanging on and he firmly believes in his plan. And while we wait for this process to play out, many would argue that Haiti is in a deep constitutional crisis. Are you not in fact part of the problem? Your own ratification as prime minister and you were nominated as one of four prime ministers by the president in the last six months. You were his third nomination. That was blocked by the Senate. In fact, he nominated someone after you. That was also blocked, yet here you are in the prime minister's chair. What do you say to those who believe that you are in fact an illegitimate, even illegal prime minister, who is unable to resolve the issues of Haiti? Okay then, here we are talking about a serious problem. The problem of the constitution. So now, together we are going through the dialogue process. We must return to the negotiation table, so together, the political sector, private business sector, civil society, so together, we can agree on a direction for the country on this constitutional problem. Yes, indeed, I have not been ratified by the legislative power. And as stated in the Constitution, today we are in a situation of distress and I am still here to settle current affairs. And in the meantime, through dialogue will come a coalition government, which at that moment would determine the destiny of the Haitian people. But are you able to govern effectively, though, when there is so much confusion surrounding your government? The United Nations says there is a looming constitutional crisis. It believes there hasn't been a functioning government since March of this year. 
We are in an exceptional situation that requires adaptive measures. The government has set an agenda that responds to the emergencies that constitute the daily needs of the population roughly affected by this crisis. So he decided to give priority to providing services to the Republic. We are responsible for keeping the state alive, and all of the resources have been mobilized for this purpose. But is it a tenable situation? Isn't Haiti at risk of another explosion? Uh, the political crisis we know has impacted the economy of Haiti. The UN says that inflation has reached almost 20%. The local currency, the gourd, has lost about 40% of its value against the dollar. The IMF has decided to hold back aid from Haiti because it says it doesn't have a functional government and because it hasn't had an approved budget in the last two years. We are aware of the situation, but today thanks to the different proposals, directly or indirectly, from various sectors of society, of the political class, there is a way to hope for a political agreement, meaning a positive agreement, in order to guide the desperate state of the nation towards the beautiful, the good and the pleasant. But is there any sign that the dialogue that you speak of, this new environment that you want to create, can actually be achieved? That the opposition will accept that President Moïse stay in power? And are you concerned at all that now that the UN has withdrawn its troops and with the police obviously overstretched to keep the situation under control, that Haiti could once again descend into chaos? Okay, now we have to look at the situation from the legal angle. And the President of the Republic, he is open to any form of negotiation. But so long as it stays close to the Constitution, yes. And we are working a lot on the security, as it is the top priority. Could this lead to a collapse of your government? I do not think that the international community, through this structure, will turn its back on us. I don't think so. We are a member of the United Nations. We must not forget it. So the Security Council, given the title, has obligations towards all member states. We are working hard with the international community through its representation at the UN. We will continue to work day and night so that finally we find a solution to this situation of crisis. And of course, through non-violent measures. Prime Minister Jean-Michel Lapin, thank you very much for making the time to speak with us. Thanks very much indeed. The younger generation of Haitians has been behind much of the push for change. Last year, a social media campaign called the Petro Challenge mobilized protesters demanding accountability after $2 billion in Venezuelan oil loans intended for development projects went missing. Government investigations implicate 15 former government officials and allege President Moise helped embezzle some of the money before he came to office. Moise denies any wrongdoing. We now return to Port-au-Prince to hear from one of these activists. When the government is established on corruption, impunity, and social injustice, there is only so much that the people can take before they reach the breaking point. No problem is a group of um, citizens we are heavily involved in the fight against corruption and impunity for social justice. In no country would you accept that the president is into corruption and nobody says anything. So we ask for him to resign. Look, if we go right away into election, the same people will be re-elected. They have the money, they have the guns, and they have the power. And historically in Haiti, this is all you need to be elected. So we're asking for a transition that's going not only to break with all of the bad practices, but also put serious and solid base for the new government that would be elected in three years' time.
to have ground and to really work. So that's a government that would be gen doing general audit of the public administration. That's a government that would be transparent. We would be looking into participative democracy. We would be looking into a new constitution. But what is very clear is that what you are seeing in the streets today is us, the people, telling the president, we have divorced you. We've divorced you long ago. It's time for you to resign. Now, among the protesters' list of demands is a call for constitutional reform in Haiti. A constitutional amendment committee in the Haitian parliament is exploring cutting the number of parliamentarians in half, getting rid of political immunity for lawmakers accused of wrongdoing, and even scrapping the position of prime minister altogether. Lawmaker Jerry Tardieu, member of Haiti's parliament, chairs that committee. He joins me here today in the studio. Uh, Jerry Tardieu, Haiti finds itself yet again in the midst of another upheaval fuel shortages, protests that have been going on for weeks, allegations of graft reaching the highest levels of government. Mm -hmm. Haiti is ranked as one of the 20 most corrupt countries in the world, according to Transparency International. Mm -hmm. How do you restore public trust in the country's government and institutions? It's going to be a long process, and it's going to be a tough process. Haiti is currently going through its worst crisis in its contemporary history. We're talking about an embattled president who is now facing the fear of the population. We're talking about a population that has had enough with corruption, misery, poverty. There's a cry for change in Haiti, and this is what's going on right well, now. As you mentioned, the people of Haiti, the vast majority, including uh, first and foremost the youth, want a change. They Absolutely. are sick and tired of the old ways of doing business, but they are calling on President Moïse to step down because of all these allegations of embezzlement that have touched him and implicated him. Do you agree with these calls? Do you think he should resign? Absolutely. Jovenel Moïse, Haiti's president, is the cause of all this mess. Jovenel Moïse has managed to have against him all sectors of Haiti. We are talking about private sector, unions, organization of human rights, youth organization, civil society, the church. Every sector of Haitian society has now publicly asked him to step down and resign. But, but let's face it, the anger isn't just directed at him. That's the point. At the presidency or at the prime minister's office. It's directed at the opposition as well, who it's are facing serious allegations of corruption. Is Moïse stepping down the solution to this crisis? It's, it's directed towards anyone with a position of authority. More than Jovenel Moïse stepping down or resigning, there's a cry in Haiti for something new, something different another country, another constitution, another political regime, another country, another way of doing things. So you're right. And the youth is on the street carrying that revolt and leading it. You say that, but some believe that if you hold new elections today or tomorrow and in, in a few months or even in a couple of years, the same old people will find a way to get back to power. Those with, quote, the money, the guns and the power. This is what people on the streets of Port-au-Prince have been telling us. So clearly the anger is far deeper than that. It isn't just a political crisis, is it? Is there a constitutional crisis as well? There is. The crisis is multidimensional. It is political, economic, social, institutional, electoral, and moral. You just said it. Corruption is such a normal thing in Haiti that you have lawmakers that publicly accept that they have received bribe to ratify a prime minister. Once you reach that level of corruption, you have reached rock bottom. Everything is to be done. There is a transition to come. It cannot be with Jovenel Moïse. There needs to be a big, a, a biggest round table in Haiti to host all the actors in civil society and political parties in order for us to have a roadmap towards the future. That roadmap would include an emergency economic and social recovery plan, the petro Caribe trial that all the youth are is asking for, a constitutional reform, and of course, there are certain laws that have to be passed. All this sounds wonderful, but when it comes to That's implementing to it on, <laughs> when it comes to implementing these reforms and changes, how serious are you, members of the opposition? How realistic is this? We have no other option than to be very serious because Haiti is slowly dying. We're talking about a country today that is totally locked. No food coming from the provinces to the capital. No food for the prisoners in jail. Inflation at 20 percent high. We're talking about investment being frozen, private and public. We're talking about the central bank financing a huge deficit, which means downfall of the national currency. 
all the signals are red. There is no time for politicking. There is no time to play political games. Now is the time to set up and settle the problems of Haiti once and for all. But settle them how? Many say the Constitution actually produced this situation, that what happened is too many lawmakers, those in the opposition, those uh, uh, that are pro-government, have been using the Constitution, exploiting it, manipulating it, as you say, as a tool for blackmail and for taking down those who don't play by the corrupt rules. You mentioned yourself that some lawmakers are paid to ratify prime ministers. A member of the Senate came out quite extraordinarily and actually admitted that that was the case. I ask you then, have you also been involved in any, in any kind of uh, bribe taking in exchange for voting for any kind of prime minister? I have not. Actually, no one even approached me. Because once you know someone's character, credibility, it's very difficult for you to work on that person and ask him some sort of a bribery or some sort of service. I've never been exposed to that. But have you seen it? Has it taken, well, has it taken place around you? Of course. Everybody knows that. If I was to tell you that it doesn't happen, then I would not be talking the truth to you. As a matter of fact, as the chairman of a special commission working on the constitutional reforms, one of our main proposals was first to reduce the number of parliamentaries and secondly to lift the difficulty for them to keep their immunity if they are accused of wrongdoings. Because too often in the Haitian parliament you have people who are corrupted and who are hiding because they're using their privileged congressmen and senatorial status to avoid being punished by the law. But you're suggesting some drastic cuts. Yes, uh, that's you, why I was blocked. <laughs> you're suggesting reducing the number of congressmen or deputies from 119 to 52 and senators from 30 to 10. You must be taking on very powerful interests and, and being potentially quite a lonely figure in parliament, are you? I spent the last days in parliament wearing a bulletproof jacket. I know that I'm not the favorite member of parliament among my peers, but I took my responsibility along with all the other eight members of the commission. If we don't do it internally, it's going to happen in the streets. We need more money for schools, for public roads, for hospitals, to pay policemen, nurses. Where are we going to find it? We need to change the constitution. We need to get rid of the prime minister's office to have more money to do development and social projects. How realistic is it to get rid of the prime minister's office? And is that part of the solution? Are you suggesting this because you believe that the current prime minister, Jean-Michel Lapin, is not a legitimate prime minister because he hasn't been ratified by the Senate? Well, he's not a legitimate prime minister. He has not been ratified and he's only ad interim. So we have a constitutional mess in Haiti, even if Jovenel Moïse was to resign. Constitution says that the prime minister would take over for 90 or 120 days to organize elections, but he's not legal where he is. So whether you want it or not, we're going to have to go through a political agreement and find a solution. And how do you do this? I mean, can Haiti solve the problem by itself? because the international community seems to be turning its back on Haiti right now. The United Nations has decided to downsize its yeah. mission quite drastically. I don't know if they're turning their back on Haiti. They are being very passive. If I was the Secretary General of the UN, I'll be very careful and cautious before leaving Haiti right now. Why? Because after 10 years and $10 billion spent, they're going to be leaving Haiti in a turmoil, just like they found it. And same thing with the United States. It's a very powerful actor. We are here in the center of Washington, D.C. And the United States... Is the U.S. attentive to Haiti? I mean, the, the U.S. president has his own uh, domestic problems to deal with. He does. Foreign policy towards Haiti by the United States is driven by four factors. First of all, immigration. When something goes wrong in Haiti, you might end up with thousands of boat people in the coast of Florida. Local issues, we're talking about the diaspora. Haiti's diaspora in the United States it's about 4 million Haitian Americans. They are pushing the agenda, and they are being very aggressive on their congressmen and women and their senators. Ask Nancy Pelosi, who was in Florida last week. She had quite a hard time. The two other ones are obviously drugs and terrorism. If Haiti fails, if the institutions are weak, then it's a big problem for the United States of America because it's easier for terrorism money to funnel money through banking system. And of course, it's easier from Latin America to send drugs to the United States through Haiti. So for the United States of America, it is important that they, this, that they take this crisis very, very seriously. Do you also believe that the Haitian government is to blame for caving in to the pressure that the U.S. applied on Haiti a few months ago to move away from importing Venezuelan subsidized oil? I don't think there was pressure from the United States. It just happens that the Venezuelan subsidy oil program died by itself with 
Hugo Chavez not there and there are political and economic problems right now. And as a lawmaker, how concerned are you about these very serious allegations made against two former prime ministers, the president himself before he took office, of being involved in what is called the petro Caribe oil scandal? Do you think that these should be investigated very seriously? Absolutely. There needs to be a serious trial, not a political witch hunt, but there is no transition in Haiti possible without a fair trial just to make sure that those who stole or misused the money go to jail. Should the president face trial? Of course, he's the first to have to face trial because he's the first uh, of all of us. So he needs to lead by example. If he doesn't, he needs to pay a price for it. All right, Jerry Tardieu, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Thank you, Mrs. Fagre. And so once again, Haiti teeters on the brink. It will take fundamental institutional change and wise political leadership to avert the country's collapse and descent into further chaos. With the UN now pulling out its troops and Washington focused on its own affairs, Haitians will have to depend more than ever on themselves. From Miri Dafakhri and all the team here in Washington, thanks for watching. See you next time.